everyone, I'm Miranda and welcome to my book gift guide for Christmas 2022. I'm so excited to share this gift guide with you. I've gathered together so many of my favourite books that have been published over the last year and that I think would make amazing Christmas presents or presents for the festive season generally. I have done a few other book gift guides in the past Decembers and I didn't want to repeat myself too much in this gift guide so I've mainly chosen books all from this year but you're very welcome to watch my previous gift guides for further inspiration for Christmas and I'll link to them in the description box down below where I'll link to all of the books that I mention in this gift guide of course. So I'm doing my gift guide a bit early this year because of all of the postal strikes that are happening in the UK over the next few weeks. I thought that you would appreciate the chance to get organised a little bit early and to bear in mind that post might be quite slow over the weeks ahead. So that's why I'm doing it a bit early this year and I'm also going to be following up with another gift guide next week with some non-book suggestions. So I'll be doing a favourite things video that's a bit of a Christmas gift guide as well next week. So lots of inspiration for festive presents coming up and I do hope that you'll enjoy these gift guides. I've gathered together lots of books from stocking stuffers to beautiful special editions to nature books, cookbooks, great fiction. So there's a lot to get through in this gift guide. Let's dive right in. I'm going to start with some wonderful stocking stuffers. So first up is this lovely little edition of Lewis Carroll's Through the Looking Glass and What Alice Found There. It's a special Pan Macmillan Christmas edition and I love it. I think that the dust wrapper is so pretty and when you take it off, well first you can see the lovely starry end papers and then you can see that the cover of the book has this wonderful festive design that's also very Alice appropriate with the chess pieces but the festive green and those little stars on it. The pages are, also have the lovely gold edging that you can see it really attracts the light which is so pretty and inside the book all of the text is in red and all of the illustrations are done in red and then every page has this very Christmassy trim of holly and the little stars and I just think that that is so attractive. So a real classic here of course but one that is very pretty in this sort of festive edition of it and it would make a really lovely stocking stuffer. Then two other stocking stuffers I wanted to recommend. The first one is this wonderful edition of a favourite essay of mine by Virginia Woolf. It's called Street Haunting. Some of you may remember I quoted from this essay in a London vlog that I did last year and I know a lot of you wanted to find a copy of the essay after that and I'm so pleased that this really beautiful edition of it has just been published. I love these penguin cloth bound minis and they would make very attractive stocking stuffers. So if you know anyone who loves Virginia Woolf especially, then this would be such a wonderful gift. And then the other one that I particularly love in this new series is Jane Austen's Lady Susan. This is such a fun, light read, perfect gift for any Jane Austen fans in your lives. And I love the sort of pen design on this one. It's so attractive. This actually starts in December too. It's a novel all told through letters and it would make a lovely read over Christmas. And then another stocking stuffer. I recommend these every year and it's the latest almanac. So this is a seasonal guide to 2023. 
And I love these, they're such a wonderful companion for all through the year. I've been collecting them since they very first were published, so I've got quite a few of them in my collection now. And they're just wonderful guides for the year. I like to have one by my desk so I can flick through it and know some of the important dates and festivals and so on that are coming up every month. So this is a really classic stocking stuffer gift in my opinion and one that would appeal to lots of different people, lots of different tastes as well. And then I had these two books to recommend. They were both kindly sent to me by the author Eric Carl Anderson who is Lonesome Reader and they're really fun. This one is 50 books to read if you're an armchair detective. So it recommends lots of different mysteries. There are quite a few golden age crime mysteries in here that are particular favorites of mine. So it was really great to see those included. And then this one, 50 books to read if you're a hopeless romantic. <laughs> so these are just really fun, the type of book that You'd be happy to flick through on Christmas Day and get some bookish inspiration, read a bit about lots of these different books and decide if any of them particularly appeal to you. So these are just fun little bookish gifts. And then another one that I can really see enjoying on Christmas Day is this one, The Book Lover's Joke Book which has been done by Alex Johnson for the British Library. And there are lots of terrible puns and really bad jokes in this, but ones that will especially appeal to bibliophiles. And I can certainly see reading aloud from it and enjoying some of the jokes together. It's nicely illustrated as well. And I think any bookworm would really appreciate some of the funny facts and also the silly jokes that have been compiled into this little volume. So one for the book lovers who have a bit of a sense of humour too in your life. And then I was so pleased to get this book myself. It's The Little Library Parties, 50 Recipes to Share with Friends by Kate Young. I've collected all of Kate Young's Little Library cookbooks. They're really lovely cookbooks. They have recipes that are inspired by literature. Last year, she did a wonderful one all with Christmas recipes that were inspired by Christmas scenes in books. And this year, this one has just come out and it's recipes all inspired by literary parties. There's a Parkin recipe in here that particularly appeals to me because it was inspired by a tea party in one of my favourite children's books, which is The Little White Horse by Elizabeth Googe. So definitely another wonderful gift for people who love not only books, but also good food. And this is just a real favourite of mine already. So a lovely festive little cookbook, but one that also has great literary suggestions in it too. So a really fun one here. And then a really beautiful Christmas book is this A Ukrainian Christmas, which I've just added to my shelves myself and I can't wait to look at it all through December. It says from Christmas music to gifts and food, as well as a look back through the country's rich and troubled history through the perspective of the festive season. This beautifully illustrated and powerful book introduces readers to Ukraine's unique Christmas traditions. In a country where East and West meet, this is a fascinating and unmissable guide to capturing the spirit of one of the most important times of year and a powerful reminder of the strength of holding on to your culture and beliefs, even as others try to take everything from you. So yes, like I said, one that I'm really looking forward to reading myself this December and it's a beautiful addition to my pile of Christmas books. So after Stocking Stuffers, I want to share some special edition books with you. So these are some 
really beautifully done editions of some of my favourite books and I want to start with this gorgeous folio edition of Arabella by Georgette Hare. You can see it has the beautiful slip cover with an illustration of Arabella on it. And then when you take the book out, you can see the really stunning cover. This matches an edition of Venetia by Georgette Hare that Folio Society published earlier. And I'm so pleased that they're continuing to do a few Georgette Hares. Both Venetia and Arabella are both real favourites of mine. And if there's a Georgette Hare fan in your life, then I think they would be over the moon with this really gorgeous edition. It's got some really lovely illustrations in it by Sally Dunn. It's a beautiful book to read. I love having the folio editions of books that I love because it's so special to have wonderful illustrations that go through it. And I think they're doing a really nice job with this Georgia Hare series. Like I said, Arabella is a real favourite of mine. And if you're also new to Georgette Hare, then either Arabella or Venetia would be wonderful ones to start with. If you love Jane Austen, if you love Bridgerton and all that kind of thing, then you really should give Georgette Hare a try. And then I have another folio book to recommend, very special one that I just recently added to my shelves. And that's this gorgeous edition of Wolf Hall by Hilary Mantel. And you can see it has a stunning wraparound cover and it has the gold edging on the pages, which makes it even more special. This also features some really beautiful illustrations by Igor and Marina. There's one colour illustration that's the frontispiece and then all of the rest are sort of black and white sketches but they're also really well done, very beautiful and I think they add so much atmosphere to reading the book. It was so sad that Hilary Mantel died earlier this year and I think that having such a special edition of the first in her very famous trilogy is just such a wonderful gift to receive this Christmas. So anyone who's a huge fan of the Wolf Hall books would I think be overjoyed to get this. And then, of course, I have to mention this stunning edition of Persuasion curated by Barbara Heller that has so many special handwritten letters inside it, as well as little cards, a map of Bath and other sort of paraphernalia that go so well with the novel, all tucked between the pages. Persuasion is my favourite Jane Austen novel. I had such a fun time doing it for the Comfort Book Club in October and having this special edition where you can unfold Captain Wentworth's letter to Anne Elliot. That's very, very special. So I'm so thrilled that Barbara chose to do Persuasion as the next one in this series. She's also done Little Women and Pride and Prejudice, which are very special ones too. And I absolutely love the attention to detail that she puts into all of the letters and all of the other notes and different bits of correspondence that are all slipped in between the pages of these really beautiful volumes. But Persuasion is extra special, so a wonderful present for any Jane Austen fan. And then the other editions that I really love of classic novels are these ones that are illustrated by Marjolaine Bastin. This isn't a new edition of Sense and Sensibility, this came out a little while ago, but there is going to be a Marjolaine Baston edition of Little Women. So I'm going to put a picture of that up here. It's not out yet, so I can't show it to you in this video, but it looks really stunning. And I know a lot of you like these special illustrated editions as well. So I wanted to just draw your attention to this new one of Little Women that looks really beautiful. So I know a lot of you enjoy these too.
And then another special edition that isn't out yet, but I also wanted to mention, is there's going to be a special edition of The Girl of Ink and Stars by Kieran Millwood Hargrave. I'll put a picture of it up here. I think it's due out next week and it looks gorgeous. The Girl of Ink and Stars has become a real modern classic in children's literature and it's a wonderful story about a young girl who's forbidden to leave the island that she lives on but one day her best friend goes missing and she's determined to be part of the search party. So it's a book that's really about magic and mythology and adventure and friendship and I'm really excited by this special edition that looks like it really does this book a justice. There are gorgeous illustrations all throughout and it's of course a hardcover as well. So if you're looking for a special gift for a young reader in your life, then you may want to consider this beautiful edition. Okay, that's it for special edition books. Now I want to share some books that are really special hardbacks that will particularly appeal to book lovers. So the first one is this Rooms of Their Own, Where Great Writers Write by Alex Johnson, with stunning illustrations by Jane by James Osees. I hope I'm pronouncing the last name correctly, apologies if not. So this book is fascinating. It tells all about where different writers have enjoyed writing, how the rooms in which they work have helped them in their writing careers, and different habits of writers as well. And it's gorgeously illustrated with these stunning illustrations. This is such a fun book to just dip in and out of. It would make a wonderful read during the winter holidays and I highly recommend it. I loved learning lots of different things about writers in this. For instance, that Agatha Christie liked to think up plots while she was in the bathtub. Um, but it features a wide range of authors, both classic writers as well as modern authors. So a wonderful book for anyone who loves writers and writing and maybe wants a bit of inspiration for their own writing lives. I think this would be a wonderful gift. And then another book that I think is so special is Distilled Genius, The Illustrated Secrets of Life, a collection of life-changing quotations by Susan Branch. Susan Branch is an American writer and illustrator and blogger, and I absolutely love her books. This one is very special. I got it when I had COVID in the summer and it really cheered me up when I wasn't really able to read much. I could so enjoy flicking through this beautiful book which is filled with inspirational quotations and it just brought me so much joy and I think this would be a wonderful gift for people during the festive season. There are lots of different quotes under different categories like friendship and love and quiet and I think Susan Branch has done such a good job in choosing a wide range of different quotations but they all managed to really speak to me and of course she's such a wonderful illustrator that the book is a joy not only for all of the wise words within it but also for the charming illustrations. So this is one that you can just quietly look at and browse all through the year ahead. It's one to keep by you perhaps on your bedside table so that you can be continually inspired or comforted or whatever it is that you need um, from wise words of wisdom. Anyway, a real favourite of mine and I think a fabulous Christmas gift idea. And then you know how much I love the Batsford anthologies. They've done so many poetry anthologies, nature writing anthologies, and some really special ones came out this year that I wanted to share with you. First up is this one, A Bedside Companion for Book Lovers, an anthology of literary delights for every night of the year, edited by Jane McMorland Hunter. 
oh, this is the perfect book for any bookworm, I think. I love to have books like this on my bedside table that I can pick up every night. And if I just want a little short read before I go to sleep, then these books are perfect for that. And this one is a collection of different bits of prose, but all to do with books and libraries and collecting books and the joy of books, the joy of reading. And I think it would appeal to so many bookworms. So a real classic in the making, I think this one, and the cover is so beautiful too. So a real favorite of mine already. Then you know how much I love a bit of poetry. And this one done by Batsford also came out this year. It's a happy poem to end every day. Again, edited by Jane McMorland Hunter. I think we could all do with a bit more joy and happiness in our lives through difficult times. And this is such a nice idea for a poetry anthology. It is a little bit seasonal as well, which I appreciate. And I've been really enjoying picking this one up. Um, every day so far already and I know that I'll be continuing to read it in 2023. So this is a real joy. And then another favourite that was published this year was Nature Writing for Every Day of the Year, again edited by Jane McMullen Hunter. So I adore nature writing, living in the countryside has really opened my eyes so much to the joys of the natural landscape and it's also really opened my eyes to so many of the joys of nature writing and reading great nature writing and this is a lovely anthology that features lots of prose and also some poetry of the very best nature writers so one that I highly recommend as well and this is a book that I recommended last year and I've just got it here to remind myself that there is a new anthology by Anna James. I always forget the title but it's A Children's Literary Treasury, Magical Stories for Every Feeling. I've put a picture up here. I've yet to receive my copy of this but I wanted to remember to tell you about it because I love these literary anthologies for children. They're definitely for adults who love children's books too, but they also make great gifts for any young readers in your life. I think this is the second one that Anna James has done. She's a well-known children's writer herself and she picks some really lovely extracts to put into these anthologies. So this would make a lovely gift either for a child or for anyone who loves children's books. So I wanted to draw your attention to this one. And then I wanted to show you a few more beautiful hardbacks. Um, these are more sort of design books and photography books. So this first one is S.J. Axelby's Interior Portraits, an artist's view of designers' living spaces. This book is a fabulous collection of interviews with interior designers. And what makes it so special are the amazing illustrations. I just adore flicking through this book and wishing I could decorate my house anywhere near as beautifully. But it's a joy to look at and it's full of inspiration as well. But I really love the illustrations. For anyone who's interested in interior design, then this will make a really stunning gift. And then a book that I got with my mum in mind is this one, Caff for Sat, The Artist's Eye. My mum absolutely adores Caff for Sat's designs. Um, she did quite a bit of quilting when she was younger and I know how much she was inspired by him. And this is a really beautiful book all about Caff for Sat and his amazing eye for colour for pattern and design and I think it's a really beautiful book for anyone who is a fan of Caff Sat or is a fan of textiles and quilting. This would be a wonderful source of inspiration. And then finally I wanted to also mention a book that 
isn't out yet, but will be very soon. So I'll put it up here. And that's An American in Provence by Jamie Beck. I really enjoy following Jamie Beck on Instagram, as I know very many people do. And her first book is out and I'm sure it'll be really stunning. So if you're a bit of a Francophile and you love all things French, then I think you would really enjoy this book. Jamie Beck is, as the title says, an American who lives in Provence. She's also an amazing photographer and she shares such beautiful sort of stories through photography of her life in Provence. And it's just so inspiring. I'm sure her book is going to be amazing and really filled with lots of beauty. So this would make a really lovely Christmas present as well. Okay, now on to some nature books that I've gathered together. So I think what will be my mum's book of the year and will certainly be one of my book of, books of the year is Next to Nature, A Lifetime in the English Countryside. And this is a collection of writing by Ronald Blythe. So this year, Ronald Blythe turned 100, and this is a celebration of someone who is so often named the greatest living British nature writer. He is certainly one of my very favourite nature writers, and this is a wonderful anthology of his work. It's organised seasonally all through the year. It starts in January with the first of the snow and it goes all through to December and the first of the Christmas carols. So this is the collection of his writing that has appeared in all of his books previously. But I love that it's organised by seasons so I can really pick this up and read it all through the year. Ronald Blythe is the author of Aikenfield, which is such a classic but his writings and musings on life and the countryside and religion and literature, I find so inspiring. There's something quite meditative about reading his work and I'm really looking forward to enjoying this all through the year in 2023. I've already started reading it because I couldn't resist and I love it already. And although I've maybe read quite a few of the pieces that are gathered in this already, I appreciate that they're, organi that they're organized seasonally. So they'll really enhance the year ahead for me. So for any nature lovers in your lives, and this would make a really wonderful gift and wonderful reading for the year ahead. And then another book that I was so excited by that was just published, it just arrived yesterday and I actually put off filming till today <laughs> so I could include this book and a couple of others that were only just published. So this is Wild Light, A Printmaker's Day and Night by Angela Harding. I'm such a fan of Angela Harding's artwork. She's one of my very favourite living artists and this is such a beautiful collection of her work. It's a follow-up companion volume to the book that she published last year, which is also a delight, but this one looks like it will be equally lovely. Lots of stunning illustrations, as well as notes from her about her life throughout the year, and some of her thoughts behind her prints and illustrations. There are also some beautiful photographs in this book as well, which I really appreciate. So this one is utterly delightful and definitely a wonderful Christmas present for anyone who loves nature, who loves art, and especially for those who adore Angela Harding's art in particular. But this is really inspiring and just a work of art in itself, this book. I haven't ever been able to buy an Angela Harding painting or print myself, but I love to collect her cards and to also have her beautiful artwork in books like this is so special. And then another charming little book for nature lovers and bird lovers in particular 
is this one published by Batsford Books, which is a year of bird song, 52 stories of songbirds. There's a QR code that's included for every songbird. So you can scan the QR code and hear the bird song, which I think is really special. It's also beautifully illustrated. As you can see, I love the illustrations all through here. And I'm terrible about knowing and recognizing the different bird calls. So I'm sure I'm going to find this book really useful. And it will maybe make an especially good gift to anyone who's recently moved to the countryside and who is trying to learn how to recognize different bird song. I'm looking forward to using it myself for sure. And then a book that I read so many rave reviews of that I had to get it myself and I love it too, is this one, The Golden Mole and Other Living Treasure by Catherine Randall with beautiful illustrations by Tala Baldwin. This is a gorgeous book. I love the gold edging on this one too, which makes it extra special. And Catherine, Catherine Rundle is such an amazing and very varied writer. She's well known for her children's books. She's written a biography of John Donne. And this is her latest book, all about the delights of animals and the curious facts and stories that um, have come up around so many of them. So it says, a swift flies two million kilometers in its lifetime. That's far enough to get to the moon and back twice over and then once more to the moon. A Greenland shark can live 500 years. A wombat once inspired a love poem. The world is so full of astonishments and so beautiful. The golden mole invites you to look anew at the creatures with which we share it. So this is a wonderful ode to nature and animals and makes fascinating and utterly charming reading too. So this book would appeal to so many different people, I think, and it's just a beautiful volume as well, special gift for Christmas time. And then another book that my mum has really enjoyed recently and that I'm reading and loving as well is this one, A Home for All Seasons by Gavin Plumley. And this is about Gavin and his husband moving to the countryside. Gavin had always, always thought he was a real city person before, but his view really changed on moving to a small village in the countryside and into this lovely old home. And when it came to ensure the home, Gavin had to um, try to find out how old this house really was. And this started him off into an investigation about the history of the house, which broadened a bit into the village and the surrounding landscape. So a fascinating read for anyone who loves houses and the British countryside. This is a great memoir. It will make a wonderful gift. And then another book for those who love um, a bit of seasonal reading is this one, Winters in the World, A Journey Through, a a Journey Through the Anglo-Saxon Year by Eleanor Parker. This one, it says, is a beautifully observed journey through the cycle of the year in Anglo-Saxon England, exploring the festivals, customs and traditions linked to the different seasons. So for anyone who loves some of the folklore and tradition of the English countryside and who loves a bit of history, then this would be the perfect read. And of course, I love books that carry you all through the different seasons. So this is great for those who also love to read a bit seasonally as well. I think that would make a wonderful gift. And then of course, there are so many Raina Wynn fans out there. Um, this is the third memoir by her called Land Lines. And this one follows an amazing walk done by Raina and her husband up into Scotland. This one just came out this year as well. So for any fans of her previous books, this will make a really wonderful gift. And then my final suggestion of books for nature lovers is this one, Two for Joy, The Untold Ways to Enjoy the Countryside by Adam Henson. This is another great 
book that takes you all through the seasons. It says, in two for joy, farmer, TV presenter and countryside lover, Adam Henson helps you to find new and varied ways to connect to the British and Irish countryside throughout each season. Discover what's happening on farms, growing in the hedgerows, the stories behind countryside superstitions, how to revive lost traditions, what you might spot when you look up at the sky and stars, and plenty more in this uplifting guide to the nature that surrounds us. I've just started dipping into this one myself and I'm finding it a really interesting read. Again, I think this would just be a very charming book to find under the Christmas tree. Okay, and now I'm on to my fiction recommendations. So I always think it's so fun to read a Christmas mystery at this time of year. And I love the British Library crime classics ones. The new one that they've put out for Christmas this year is The White Priory Murders, A Mystery for Christmas by Carter Dixon. I always think it's so much fun to curl up with a classic golden age crime mystery, maybe a box of chocolates or a mince pie, and just really get to indulge in some lovely reading time in the festive season. And I think a Christmas mystery like this is just so much fun. It always puts me in the mood. So having something like this under the Christmas tree that you get to enjoy in that quiet time before the new year, I think that's always such a lovely gift. So definitely one to put on the list for any golden age crime lovers that you know. And then another book published by the British Library that I want to recommend, but I'm still waiting to receive it myself. And that's Stories for Christmas and the Festive Season. I've put it up here so you can have a look. And this is one that's in the British Library Women Writers series. You know how much I love this series and this sounds like the perfect sort of chocolate box of delights for Christmas. It's an anthology of short stories. I can't wait to, to dig into reading this myself. It's lined up for my December reading. I'm just waiting for my copy to arrive from the publisher. And yes, I really can't wait to dive in. But this will be a lovely Christmas anthology, I'm sure. Great gift to give to all of the book lovers in your life. And then another book that is coming out, I've put this here to remind myself because it's not out just yet, but will be out very soon. And that's a special edition of another Agatha Christie mystery. It's The Mysterious Affair of Styles. So I love these editions published by Harper Collins. This is one they've previously done of Hercule Poirot's Christmas, but I'll put a picture of their new one of The Mysterious Affair at Styles up here so you can have a look. I've pre-ordered this, I can't wait to get it. I love attractive editions of Agatha Christie books. I mean, I adore her writing and this one is the very first Hercule Poirot mystery. So it's a great one to read if you've never read it, but it would be a wonderful gift for any Agatha Christie fan as well. Like I said, I can't wait to add it to my HarperCollins collection that they're of, of these new editions that they're doing. And it would be really fun to reread this one too. And then one of my real books of the year um, in terms of fiction reads is this one, Appointment with Venus by Gerard Tickle. And this has been republished by the wonderful Mandeline Press, who are republishing forgotten cl classics that have a particular emphasis on place. This book is set during World War II on one of the Channel Islands. It's a fictionalized sark. And it's such a wonderful book. I think this would appeal to many different people, which is why I've put it on my Christmas gift list. It's just such a poignant, moving story. And if you love books like the Guernsey Literary and Potato Peel Pie Society, then you absolutely have to read this. There is tragedy in this book and you will definitely need 
some tissues, I think, at the end, but it somehow also manages to be quite life affirming. And it was just a magical book to read. I loved it. And it's done so beautifully in this edition with the Edward Borden cover. You'll see why cows are so significant when you read the story. Um, but yeah, it's done so beautifully that this would make a fantastic Christmas gift. And then another book, something a bit different, but my mum read this and raved about it to me and I've just picked it up myself and this would be a great choice for anyone who loves fantasy or romance. So this one is Daughter of the Moon Goddess by Su Lin Tan and the second book in this series is just about to come out as well. I'll put a little picture of it here um, because the two together I think would make a really lovely gift but of course you could just start with Daughter of the Moon Goddess. This is full of um, Chinese mythology and romance and fantasy and it's a really engrossing read, a definite page turner. My mum stayed up till really late one night <laughs> to finish this and like I said I'm, I've started it myself and I'm really enjoying it so far. So yes for any fantasy and romance lovers in your life then I think this would be a really good pick. And then I wanted to share some books that I haven't had a chance to get to myself but are high up on my reading list and I think will make great Christmas gifts. The first one is India Nights Darling. This just came out very recently but I've been waiting for its release for years ever since I first heard about it. This is a modern retelling of The Pursuit of Love by Nancy Mitford. And I've read loads of great reviews of it already, which I'm very relieved about because The Pursuit of Love is one of my favorite books. And I thought Indian Night would do a good job of it. And judging from the reviews that I've read so far, she really has. I think she's captured the spirit of the original novel, but has given it a very interesting modern take as well. So this one I think would be a really fun read. I'm looking forward to it and it would be a great Christmas gift for others who also love Nancy Mitford's books. I can't wait to get to it myself. And then this one is Kate Atkinson's latest novel, Shrines of Gaiety, which is set in London in the interwar years. I really love Kate Atkinson's writing. I thought Life After Life was such a good book and I've been eagerly anticipating this one. I know there are many other people who love Kate Atkinson's writing as well and her latest novel would be a wonderful gift. And then again, another book I've been really looking forward to is this one, Bleeding Heart Yard by Ellie Griffiths. This is a follow-up book from The Postscript Murders, which I really enjoyed. And I've been very excited to read this one. I'm sure it will be good. I always love any Ellie Griffiths books that I read and it will just be such a treat when I have a chance to sit down with this book. But again, this would be a great Christmas gift for anyone else who loves Ellie Griffith's mysteries. So definitely one to think about. And then finally, another one for mystery lovers and Agatha Christie lovers in particular. That's this one, Marple. 12 new stories, 12 great writers, one Agatha Christie. This is a collection of Miss Marple short stories written by contemporary writers. It's a real ode to Agatha Christie and especially to Miss Marple, who is my favourite of her detectives. And it will just be a really fun volume to find under the Christmas tree for anyone who loves mysteries and who loves Agatha Christie. And speaking of Agatha Christie, I have to recommend uh, this biography that I read this year and absolutely loved. So for some non-fiction choices here, Lucy Worsley's biography of Agatha Christie was such an engrossing, fascinating read. I read it cover to cover. I really enjoyed it. Um, I very much liked how there was a lot of emphasis on Agatha Christie's early life, but also on Agatha Christie 
in how she was a good businesswoman and how she wasn't, as well as her relationships. It covers her disappearance and appearance again in Harrogate, those famous few days that she went missing. Um, it's covered really well and very sensitively by Lucy Worsley in this. So this will make a wonderful gift to go along with the Marple short story collection or just on its own for anyone who loves Agatha Christie and wants to know a bit more about her life. This was a really illuminating and well-researched biography. So I highly recommend this. And then another non-fiction read, a memoir that I really loved returning to this year was Nella Last's War and it's been republished by Slightly Foxed in this gorgeous edition with hot pink end papers and a hot pink ribbon as bookmark. I think that that's really wonderful. I'm so glad that Slightly Fox have republished this book. It's a diary of an ordinary housewife, as she would definitely describe herself, although when you read the book, you see that in fact Nella Last was quite an extraordinary woman in many ways. But she certainly saw herself as very ordinary. And this is her diary that she produced for the Mass Observation Project during the war. And it makes such interesting reading. It offers a wonderful slice of social history and of what life was like at home in Britain during World War II. But what's very special as well is this lovely, slightly foxed edition of the book. Really, really beautiful. And what will make a very nice companion book as a little gift would be this one, Blitz Spirit. Um, compiled by Becky Brown from the Mass Observation Archive. I have the hardback of this book, but it's just come out in paperback. Um, so that would be a great Christmas gift option as well. Be really nice to maybe pair the new paperback with the slightly foxed Nella Lass edition, um, because this is a really interesting collection from many different voices, different people, um, but who also were part of the mass observation project and who wrote about their daily experiences during World War II. So you can see it's a collection from many different diaries. Really interesting. So those are my fiction and a few non-fiction recommendations. Now let's move on to my final list, which is cookbooks. Okay, so finally some books all about food because of course we need good food at Christmas time. I'm going to start with a memoir that has received absolute rave reviews and that's Stanley Tucci's Taste My Life Through Food. I've started dipping into this and there's a very funny chapter on Christmas Day with a great cocktail recipe at the end of it that I definitely want to try myself this Christmas. But I think this memoir would appeal to many different people and it's a great collection of anecdotes and food memories of Stanley Tucci's incredible life. So this makes fascinating reading, often very funny reading, but touching too at times. And it's just out in paperback. I think this will make a lovely gift for a wide range of people. And then another book that was just recently published that I was so excited to get is The Food Almanac, Volume 2, Recipes and Stories for a Year at the Table, compiled by Miranda York. I have the first volume of the Food Almanac and I absolutely loved it, but I have to say this second volume looks even better. This is packed full of great recipes and also really interesting bits of food writing from a wide range of cooks and food writers and it's, organi it's organized seasonally with recipes and anecdotes all through the year. And I'm loving dipping into it already. There's a menu provided for each month of the year too, which is wonderful. And there are some really great recipes in this, but also some little essays on food that I'm just loving. I'm really impressed by this. 
It's charmingly illustrated as well and would make a great Christmas gift for any food lovers in your life. And then I wanted to share some baking books that I've loved this year. I think my standout one is this one, Postal Bakes by Lucy Burton. I've used this book so much this year. It's really wonderful. These are all recipes for bakes that you could send in boxes through the post. Of course, you don't have to do that. All of these recipes are great and you can definitely just enjoy them at home. I've done a mix of both. I've made these for just enjoying at home, but I've also sent quite a few through the post to friends. And Lucy sort of guides you step by step, not only through the recipes, but also how to post them and pack them and all of that. And I love that idea, especially in the festive season. It's so nice to send a box of goodies to a friend or relative. And there's lots of inspiration for that in this book. But I'm just so impressed by the recipes. All the ones I've done have turned out so well. They're really delicious. And I highly recommend this. If you're into baking, then I'm sure you'll love this too. And then another baking book that I've been really loving already is Nadia's Everyday Baking. I can't wait to watch the TV series of this one. I haven't been able to see that yet, but I'm really looking forward to it. And this one is filled with some real crowd-pleasing recipes and generally fairly straightforward bakes. So lots of ones that will appeal to lots of people and another great one for any of the bakers in your life. Then a, another great baking book that I got recently but I'm already loving is this Bad Girl Bakery cookbook. So this one is packed full of lots of wonderful bakes as well. And it is a standout in that it has quite a lot of plant-based recipes and gluten-free ones too. So if that is of interest, then you'll find lots of nice recipes, I think, in here. But there are just so many that I want to try. There are great instructions in this one as well. And I also love the story behind it of a bakery set up in a remote part of Scotland. Yeah, a real fun one and a lovely book for bakers. And then a bit more of an unusual cookbook is this one, Tava, Eastern European Baking and Desserts from Romania and Beyond. I got this one just as I was looking at Dracula, actually, and it was so interesting to be flicking through this cookbook, which has some recipes from Transylvania, just as I was, dream just as I was reading Dracula. It was just a really great literary coincidence, food coincidence going on there. And it made me so interested to dive more into this cookbook, which it's got gorgeous photographs. It's teaching me a lot about food from an area that I don't know well at all myself. And it's so interesting to read more about the culture and the food um, of this area. There are so many great recipes that I want to try too. And it's just a really beautiful book, one that's just been published quite recently and would be a bit of a different one for anyone who is maybe quite a proficient baker in your life and you think would like something a little bit different, then this would be a great cookbook for them. And then, finally, I wanted to recommend Jeremy Lee's, I believe it's his first cookbook, which is Cooking Simply and Well for One or Many. Jeremy Lee is the head chef at Quo Vardis, which is one of my favorite restaurants in London. I have so many happy memories of meals eaten at Quo Vardis that I was really excited to get this stunning cookbook. There are lovely illustrations in it that anyone who's been to Quo Vardis and ordered from the menu, you'll recognize those illustrations. There are lots of fantastic ones that I want to try from this book. But yes, for anyone who is a Quo Vardis fan, then this is definitely a must as well. And just looking at it brings back so many happy memories for me of my London days, which is really fun.
But anyway, those are all of my recommendations for this Christmas book gift guide. I hope that you found something of interest in this. Thank you so much for watching. Good luck with all of your festive shopping coming up. And yes, I do hope that you found this useful. But thank you for watching and I'll see you again next week for another gift guide, if not so much of a bookish one. Goodbye.